gonna be a good one. Self-respect and fitness. How do these two things tie in together? I wanna give some, uh, I wanna give three pillars of how self-respect can show up in fitness for you, and I want to provide examples of each and kind of just relate, relatability touchdown points. But first, let me set the container. And if my computer starts to make kind of like a loud noise because the fans are going, I'm gonna just move you closer to my face. <laughs> and I'll just hold it up for a while. So I feel like that might be happening in this moment. So let's see. Okay, hopefully the sound's still good. So. Set the container. First, who am I? My name is Leanne Price, and if you're just happening upon my content for the first time, welcome. I am a 12-year fitness and weight loss coach, and um, yeah, I've helped hundreds of men and women lose weight and get into the best shape of their lives. My company is named L3 Method, and it is a kind of a high boutique, um, cozy, casual, but you know, private and um, semi-private group coaching setting with lots of private coaching kind of laced within there. And we've had some really great results, you know, in the year and a half, almost two years that we've been open. Um, prior to L3 Method, my company's name was Work Grind Fly, so you might have seen that floating around the interwebs as well. Uh, let's see. So I hold eight certifications. Um, I, yeah, I've been in business for myself for nine and a half years, and before that, I was a personal trainer at Gold's Gym and Lifetime Athletic, if you guys have been to either of those fabulous establishments. Um, okay, let's move to disclaimers. Um, I'm not a doctor or a licensed psychologist. The information I provide today is for information resources only. So. Um, this is not to be taken as a diagnosis or for medical treatment purposes. Please consult with your physician before starting an exercise or nutrition regimen and or prior to making any health care decisions uh, regarding a specific medical condition. Okay, next for our container, this is consensual coaching. So if you're not familiar with this terminology, um, Basically, it means take what I share today, engage it against your own internal system. If something lands as truth, cool, maybe there's something there for you to explore. If um, something doesn't seem resonant within your system, then it doesn't, it doesn't resonate for you and it's not necessarily your truth and that's cool too. So basically, take what you want from this and leave what you don't, all good. Um, <laughs> practice self-compassion. This is another huge important part of any type of container setting uh, when we go over these delicate, sensitive topics. So that's our first, first touchdown point is always remember that compassion for yourself is gonna get you farther in the long run and create more sustainability than pain, punishment, running yourself down, criticizing the heck out of yourself. So it's always that blend and balance of honesty, you know, taking an honest look in the mirror and also self-forgiveness Again, self-compassion, that's your road to um, healing. And healing provides lasting health, right? So we want to create change and growth. So we, get, we have to be a little bit objective and say, okay, you know, this is where I'm, I might be messing up. This is where I'm steering myself towards misalignment. This is where I may be creating dis-ease in my system. Cool, I'm gonna be honest about that, but I also know that at the time that I was making these micro decisions that were leading me down this path, that I was doing the very best I could with the information I had at the time. And what's so beautiful is you're here now and you're wanting to gain new information and create new pathways for yourself. And I honor you for that. You are a phenomenal human being for wanting that for yourself and for being motivated and inspired to gain new information and new insights and see what else is possible. All right, um, be gentle with yourself. Um, yeah, like I said, honor your past decisions. You're doing the best you could. Self-responsibility, you know, that's what this is about as well. And I always say that your journey, your fitness journey, your weight loss journey, if that's one of the goals in your fitness journey is to lose weight, <clears throat> it should feel like you're coming home. You're coming back into your body you're coming back into the original truth by which your your you know your soul is is standing on 
And that's the thing. Sometimes we just, we veer off. And then when we come back, this should feel like your true home. This should feel like who you truly are. And you probably have experienced this if you've lost weight before. When you have your new fit, lighter body, you're like, ah, this feels more like me. I feel like myself in my own skin now. I don't have this extra baggage weighing me down. I don't have this like denser frequency or this denser energy about me. This is the true me. This is the more appropriate outer expression and representation of what's on the inside, right? Cool. Last thing with our uh, container, DMing me if something cuts deep. So like I said in my last masterclass, I am not here to just open up a wound and peace out. I'm not here to be like, oh, look at that. You can look at that, but you know, drop this bomb and bye. That's not what I'm here for. If something really, really hits you um, and you're like, ooh, and you're, you're finding yourself struggling a little bit, please DM me. This is my job. This is my whole business. This is all I do is fitness, weight loss, coaching people. I'm here to help women and men, but, but primarily my focus at this point in my career is women. I'm helping, I help women remember who they are, remember what badasses they are, and remember why they deserve the ultimate level of self-care. Self that's what I'm here for. So if something's really hitting you hard and it doesn't feel good and it's sticky and it's ugh, wrenchy and you're not quite sure how to get yourself back to like an even keeled place so that you can operate normally, DM me, I'm here for you. I might not have the answer, but I will do whatever I can to find someone or something or a resource or something to help you um, get, get to a good place. Okay. Cool. Uh, container is now set. Let's dig in. My initiative today, I see a lot of people giving up their sovereignty in the fitness industry. So I don't mean people who work in the fitness, fitness industry like myself. Um, I mean people who are trying to get fit, people who are um, utilizing the resources and the people in the fitness industry to get that desired result. And that's beautiful. Um, you know, we want you to lose weight. We want you to get in phenomenal shape. We want you to remember what a badass you are. We want you to be the truest expression of yourself on this, you know, with your physical exterior. But if you put your fate entirely in someone else's hands, whether that be, um, you know, a fitspo model that you follow on Instagram that you're inspired by, or it's a CrossFit gym that you regularly regularly go to, or a mixed martial arts gym, or it's your tennis coach, or it's a brand that sells you fat burners and protein powder, or it's it's like a fitness movement style brand, and they provide you with information, tools, tactics, hacks, game plans, you know, and products maybe or apparel. If you put everything into an external source and say, if I just follow them and do exactly what they say, I'll get the result without also remembering that your intuition is queen, or if you're a man, king, or if you identify as a man or a woman, whatever you prefer. Um, that must also have a place in all of your micro decisions day to day. And a lot of your micro decisions day to day do have to do with your health. And you may not think that at first when you're at your job, you know, you're in your career space. Um, I'm going to show you today how there's actually a lot more going on than you think when it comes to health and fitness in your workplace and in your off time, as well as um, self-respect and how that comes into play and whether one decision will represent you respecting yourself and another decision will not. And those decisions that don't represent self-respect, sometimes in the short term look like smart decisions to get you fit, but I'm gonna show you how that may actually not be the case. And this is cool, because a lot of people trip up because they'll get a temporary result, and then whatever, they will move, and so that CrossFit gym won't be available anymore, or they will you know, take that fat burner for six weeks, and that's really the length of time, the max that you're supposed to take a fat burner before you cycle off of it. 
and then the weight comes back on. And you're like, shoot, that one thing that I was relying on to get me that result and then to sustain the result is not getting that for me anymore. What do I do now? And people haven't established that connection with themselves. They haven't learned to honor and respect what this is saying first. And so then they can feel like a ship at sea with no compass. Awesome. All right. So really the goal is like to get the disempowerment out of fitness for you. That's this masterclass. Mm. Cool. Yeah. So filtering things like filtering your decisions around your fitness through a discernment process of, does this feel like truth for me? Does this align with my values? And of course, there's some pre-work that needs to be done here, which is if you don't know what your values are, I would suggest you taking some time to, to figure those out as well. There are like, I mean, there's a specific values exercise and now I'm going off on a tangent, but really quick, there's a values exercise that I completed once back when I lived at the entrepreneur house uh, that a roommate gave me. And it had, I think like a hundred, maybe more values that were one word, you know, love, respect, safety, you know, every, like being a patriot, like all these different values. And it's like, you feel aligned to all of them. But if you take the time to discern and distill down what are your top 12 and what are your top seven? What might be your top five that are the most important to you? And they're all important, but which ones do you value the most? And then knowing that, and this is still a very heady game, but knowing that can help you to start to make decisions about what's really lining up for you and what maybe isn't. Whereas before, if you kind of don't know what your values are, and what self-respect means to you, it's gonna be a lot harder to make decisions like, okay, this is this good for me or not? Is this person, this coach, this modality, this supplement, this game plan, this nutrition plan, are these good for me or are these better for maybe someone else? They're not good or bad if they're not good for you. They're just, they're just for someone else, if that makes sense. Okay, so, um, to help us today, I've divided self-respect and fitness into three categories. Essentially, they're the three pillars of sensation, if you will. Um, but we're, for the sake of our masterclass, we're going to just call them the three pillars of self-respect. Uh, it's going to be respecting the body, respecting the mind, and respecting the spirit. Cool. So let's jump into it. The first one, which is, of course, the most obvious, right? The body, because that's what we're here to do. We're here to get our bodies looking good, looking good. So we have to remember that if that's what we're trying to do, the body is essentially the customer. And if we're not leaning in and listening to what the customer wants and getting on the same side of the negotiation table as the customer, we can really fall short in delivering, especially long-term benefits, long-term results. Okay, so the body is super wise. The body, okay, so hint, hint, the body knows more than your boot camp instructor. It does. Your body knows better than your boot camp instructor does. So your body is queen, right? Would you, can you picture a queen, and you can say king if this is a man watching, but I'm gonna, I'm, I direct my attention to the ladies. Um, if your body is queen, does it make sense for, you to tell a queen, like, listen to this person who's saying, drop down and give me 10 more, 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 sweat harder, don't give up, pussy, and like, excuse me for my language, but one more rep, Rah! like, no pain, no gain, you don't get the ass that you want by sitting on it. Do you think, like, someone would talk to a queen that way? Do you think a queen would accept being spoken to that way? Mm -hmm. So it's just about discernment, you know, like, does that really feel good to you? Or does it feel good because you think it does because mentally someone's told you that's the only way to get in great shape is to have some angry man spitting on you and screaming and yelling for you to like get every ounce and every drop out of you. Is that really the way? Does that really feel like you're respecting your body when your body's like, stop, no more, ow, and you're like, 
still going and still going and still going because mentally you're like, I have to finish these last five, 10 reps, whatever, because if I don't, I'll get yelled at. Does that sound consensual? I don't know. And it might for you. That might land and resonate and feel good to you. It might. Everyone's different. For me, that doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like it makes sense. I'm not sure how to say it better than that. It feels more like I'm an animal, to be honest. It doesn't feel like I'm a queen. I love when coaches give love, respect, support, encouragement, and honor your no, just like they honor your yes. And that doesn't just have to be a boot camp instructor. It could be a coach that you're having conversations with on Zoom calls about work like this, deep inner work. If that coach is pushing, 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 and never honoring your no or, or never asking you, okay, how does that land? What are you getting from this? And they're just telling you what to do. That's not respect. That's not honoring your own compass. Okay, so now I feel it's appropriate to stop and give uh, you guys a description of my two levels of fitness. This is something that I really dove into two years ago because I started noticing a major discrepancy in the fitness industry uh, with marketing, with coaching, with how the approach is for people. And this is, again, if you're going to have two categories of people, are there going to be massive generalizations? Yes, absolutely. There are so many nuances in between these two categories. But I feel that this is really, really important to go over. And I think it's going to help you have some light bulbs go off in your head. So here's the first level of fitness. This is the first level that I see people at. First level of ascension. There are people who have never been the weight that they see in their head as their goal. They've never actually had the body or even close to the body that they desire. And so this means that they've always been overweight, slightly overweight, really overweight. Um, they've never consistently exercised. They've never really taken the t time to convert their taste buds over to actually enjoying health food. These are the folks who, um, they're not deciding what brand of yogurt to buy at Whole Foods. They're deciding what is healthier today, Taco Bell or In-N-Out. You know, what is less calories maybe. So this first level of fitness is not good or bad. It's just the first level. These people oftentimes very much live in their heads. They're not really in their body. Or if they're in their body, they're way down deep and they're not in the outer edges, meaning like they're not feeling what this is feeling like. They're stuck down here or they're stuck up here. And so we're getting a little bit more into like metaphysics and, and we don't have to really dive into that too deeply today. But the point is that... Um, they're not in touch with the physical sensations that are going on oftentimes until those physical sensations become more poignant, more loud, more expressive, more painful. So um, what else with this first, this first level? This first level of fitness, um, they respond more and it feels better to them. It feels more like, ooh, this is what I need. It pings their system in a positive way. If someone is doing a little bit more of that boot camp instructor style. If someone's saying, come on, like if someone's pushing them, because the thing is they haven't pushed themselves. So the wonderful thing about this group of people is they're very much, um, they're up here and they can become detached from this and keep focusing on what needs to be done from an intellectual or a mental standpoint. This is often the case. Another great thing about this group of people is they are um, great at self-preservation. So of the two categories I'm going over, they are at less risk for injury in the, sh in the long term. But the, the issue is these people fall short of their potential, way short. They've never come close to their outer edges. They've never come close to even seeing what they're capable of on a physical level. Okay, let's go over the second category. The second group of ascension, these are people that have no issue leaning into their, the edges of their comfort zone. They have no issue going to, over the finish line and they've often gone way past the finish line. They have no issue working hard, pushing themselves to the brink. But these people are not as good as self-preservation as you can clearly see. They are much higher, much more at risk at, of burnout and of injury. Um, and both levels aren't sustainable, right? 
But the sustainability gap with this second level of folks is that they think if I just run another marathon, if I just do another triathlon, if I do another bodybuilding competition, if I just wake up at 4.30 a.m. every single day and do the hardest workout possible, then I'll just keep having the body that I had at 21 or 25 when I first started started doing this crazy regimen. And especially for women, this is not sustainable and it actually can age you more quickly. So where I'm seeing the discrepancy in the fitness industry with how to motivate and how to market to even is this first level, it's good to push them a little bit more. It's good to push them into their comfort zones, the edges of that. It's good to help them to cross hurdles that they've never attempted to do before so that they can come closer to their full potential. The second group of people, their coming home is going to be relearning how to be gentle to themselves, relearning how to listen to their, both both groups need to listen to their bodies. But the first group is like not listening to what their body needs as far as stimulus and as far as like moving up and out and forward. And the second group is not listening to their bodies in terms of slowing down, easing back, settling into the system, paying attention to you know what the needs are. And they have pain as well that will come along. They will feel it and ignore it, feel it and ignore it, and keep pushing and keep pushing and saying, five more reps. When in reality, the medicine for the group, first group, which is maybe the five more reps, is not the medicine for the second group. Again, the medicine for this second wave of ascension is to come to scale it back and to find balance. Balance between crazy workouts and lighter workouts. Balance between active days and rest days. Okay, so this is gonna be a recurring theme. I'm gonna talk about those two levels as we move forward here. All right, so um, here's a way that, so we talked about respecting your body as far as when a bootcamp instructor, a personal trainer, a, a fitness coach of any kind, a sports coach is pushing, 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 pushing. And yes, that's their job. But part of a coach's job is to be a bit empathetic and notice and watch the signs and signals when the second type of application may be better suited for that that moment. Meaning like telling an athlete who has pushed themselves to the brink, okay, now it's time to take a rest break. Instead of encouraging them to continue pushing because they've only had uh, experience with this first level of ascension group. Okay, here's another way to respect your body. Take a lunch break. <laughs> so here's when we're going into the workplace. Respecting your body enough to take a lunch break is huge. And I am so at fault for this all the time. I breeze through my lunch breaks because I do a lot of inter- intermittent fasting. That feels good to me. It feels like my truth. So Often I will skip my lunch break, and that's not always a good thing. Um, it's a good, sorry about my eyelashes like sticking together. Um, it's a good thing to, even if you don't think you need, at some point during the day, give yourself an energetic break. It's respectful to the body to do so. Cool. Um, yeah, and, and often we're in the middle of our day and we're, our brain is like really, really noisy. And we essentially have to override some of that noise up here and listen to what's going on in here. Again, I am so at fault for this all the time where I'm just, I'm up here and I'm buzzing and I'm moving and grooving and I'm making things happen in my workday so that my work can move forward. And then I'm ignoring um, what this needs. Oftentimes, uh, this is something I used to do all the time. I would do a coaching call. I would get off and I would have a stomach ache and a headache for the rest of the day. And I didn't know why. I learned it was because I wasn't breathing. <laughs> Isn't that funny? The seasoned fitness coach doesn't know how to breathe. I know, I know how to breathe when I'm working out, but there was a, a disconnect See, when we are in our workplace, sometimes we will throw out the window the tools and tactics that we've learned that help us be healthy. Um, and we think, oh, that's only for this particular setting. That's only for when I'm working out. That's only for in my downtime. That's only for when I'm sleeping. You know, simple things. And I used to totally think this was stupid. I used to be like, hi, Lou. Love you too, brother. I used to totally think it was st- so dumb. Like, 
All right, breathing, that can really make a difference. Okay, no, I wasn't breathing. So now I breathe when I'm on lives. I breathe on coaching calls. I just stop and breathe. And if it's awkward, it's going to be awkward. But guess what? I don't get stomach aches anymore. My digestion has improved. I don't get headaches. When my digestion improves, what happens? I absorb nutrients. I absorb nutrients better. What happens? I'm able to build more muscle and burn more fat. Isn't that amazing? Just from breathing while I'm working. So while, especially if you're in a service-based business, so I know Lou, he might not be on the call anymore, but Lou is a um, hairdresser and he's amazing. He's my hairdresser, hairstylist. Uh, so a service-based business like that. If you're serving people all day, it's even more important for you to attend to your self-care, to attend to what your vehicle is asking you for. That is how you're going to be able to have a long-term career, have a longer day, be at your best performance. So I hope this makes sense. Cool. Uh, yeah, and I just, I write off here, no deal or deadline is more important than your sanity and more important for your health than, than just something. <sighs> Breaths. I was with my girlfriend, Jamie, yesterday. She's so amazing. And an alarm went off while we were hanging out together, getting some like girl time on the couch. And I was like, what's that alarm for? And she's like, oh, that's my midday day alarm to tell me to take 10 deep breaths. I was like, so, so important. So smart. You go ahead, girl. Crucial. Okay, I'm spending too much time on this part, but I just, it's so good. All right. Many of us are hopped up on adrenaline and anxiety throughout the, throughout the day. And we don't even know it because it's like, it's, it, we're so used to it. This was totally me. And I'm still there. This is still a conscious decision every single day to notice where I'm really gaining my energy from. Am I gaining it from this like fear-based and adrenaline-ridden part of me? Or am I gaining it from alignment because this feels like it's actually truthful to me? It feels right. It feels passionate because it means I'm doing good things in the world and I'm doing good things for myself. So do good things in the world, but don't forsake yourself in the process. That's what self-respect is about as well. Hmm. So if we have a lot of adrenaline and anxiety, what happens in the body? What gets, what is there that is created more of? I don't know if that was proper English, <laughs> that sentence. Acidity. Acidity causes what? Breakdown. Breakdown causes disease. So it's really important. I'm speaking to you people in your 20s and early 30s that haven't had this stuff catch up to you yet. The breakdown does occur. Um, you may not be feeling it right now, but do what needs to be done now to keep your stress levels really nice and manageable and appropriate and in going in waves like up and down throughout the day. That's going to be very, very healthy for you long term. Okay, sleep and rest. These are some of the biggest ways to respect your body. Are you frustrated? Is there that angry voice in your head, you know, morning after morning because you're sleeping in, sleeping through your alarm when you told yourself you're going to work out? Well, guess what? Maybe your body needs that sleep. Respect your body. And if it's craving sleep, give it sleep. When you're staying up late to watch a TV show, you're giving this this short-term stimulation, more respect, you're honoring that over what this truly needs to keep working optimally for you. That's backwards, guys. It really is. So let's respect our bodies. Let's respect the physical sensations coming through because those are messages that we need to adhere to if we want to be fit, if we want to lose weight, if we want to stay fit and healthy and strong. Okay, here's another way to respect our bodies. I'm going to just like read my notes here because I want to get this right. Following other fit people on the gram. So your fitspo on Instagram, your go-tos for inspiration. This is cool if it's inspiring, but be mindful. How does following hashtag fitspo lead to self-honoring or does it lead to more self-torturing? Like when you're working out, are you coming from a space of self-torture? Like I hate my body so much because it doesn't look like this person's body that I follow for inspiration on, on Instagram. If it becomes more self-deprecation, 
if the feelings start to feel more like crappy, like I just, I suck because I'll never look like her or him, then be mindful of that. That's so disrespectful to your own body. You can't be like that other man or woman. You can only be the highest expression of yourself. And I don't care what anyone says, you are a badass in your own right. And you have gifts and you have beauty and you have strength that that person will never have. I don't know what that is because I don't know you. I don't know where it's going to be pulled from and I don't know what combination of external support is going to come together in your life so that you can become that fullest expression. But get excited about that. Don't get excited about, you know, this woman's abs or her booty. Get excited about what yours get to look like. Make that your number one excitement because there's just, there's nothing, there's nothing else you can do. You'll never be her. So why keep beating yourself up about that? Become like the most beautiful version of you, whatever that looks like, and celebrate it. <sighs> also, when you have a, an energy of self-punishment and self-torture, when you're walking into the gym or into your home space to do your workout, that can uh, up, the, up the incidence for injury. That can increase the likelihood that you'll get injured because you're, you're up here and you're not remaining connected to what you feel like, what your body feels like as you're exercising. Listening to your body while you are doing every single rep is the biggest way, second biggest way to prevent injury. The biggest way is to stretch and stay hydrated and to sleep enough. Okay, that's a few things. After that, it's being so intimately connected to your body when you're in the gym. So here's an example. I want to talk about um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, I talk about him a bit, but in his first book, and you may feel whatever you feel about him, but as a bodybuilder, he was the champion for a very long time, right? Um, and yes, he used different substances, and yes, he you know maybe trampled on some people, but just forget all that for a second. In the gym, he made sure, and this is a little over the top, but he was like, Going to the gym for me was like making love to my body. Every single movement he did, every rep repetition, even during his rest breaks, he was so intensely connected. So if he was working his bicep, his brain was in his bicep and he was living it and feeling it and breathing through it and thinking about it. I was like, oh, yes. That is how you get better results in less time is literally by being present to the move and to the body part or parts in your workout. If you're absent-minded and you're up here and you're not down here and you're thinking about other things while you're exercising, not only does it increase your likelihood for injury, but let's step away from that fear for a second. It's not going to get you the result. This is more meta. This is not going to get you the result. You, you will not have the fullest result of that move if you're absent-minded. You will get more um, retention, you'll get more of a burn, you'll get more, um, you'll get, you'll, you'll go closer to your absolute capacity because you're paying attention. Does this make sense? Just like in a relationship, just like making love. When you're present while you're making love, you're, you're seeing what's going on around you, inside you, outside of you, you're really in the moment. That's how you get the best experience. So respect your body by paying attention to it, working with it, guiding it gently, but also listening to it the whole time while you're working out. I know that sounds decompartmentalized, like I am my body. What are you talking about? Like treat my body. Like, but if you can for a moment, like separate a little bit and think about how your mind is guiding your body, these two different parts, the best thing to do is for them to be connected the whole time. Okay. Here's something that's going to be, um, let's see. Yeah. Here's something that's going to be controversial to say. On the topic of bodybuilding, bikini, figure, fitness, and physique, and uh, I think there's one other category that I can't remember the name of right now because it came about later. 
it's like only a couple years old. It's like the category where women's legs can be a little fuller than their upper bodies. I forget the name of it. But bodybuilding, NPC, IFBB, um, okay, controversial. You putting all of your stock into a judge's opinion of your body and that 20 seconds to five minutes that you're on stage, you making that more important than your long-term health, that's setting you up for failure. And yes, there are certain women and men who this is their career and it's just like any career where there are sacrifices, right? So just like late nights aren't healthy for you, extra coffee isn't healthy for you, working with toxic people isn't healthy for you, but people have done that to move up in their, in their businesses and their companies, you know, as executives, what have you. Competitors must do this as well. But if you're doing it as like a fun pastime or just to do it, get, get off your bucket list, um, do it and you're not clear about your long-term intention of why you're competing, and some blend of all of those. What a judge thinks about your body is not more important than your long-term health, than the health and the speed of your metabolism. If you put that as your number one, if you put a co excuse me, a judge and their opinion and your placement in a contest over your health, and you ignore your body signals because you're just trying to get that approval, you're trying to get that significance, that recognition via that trophy, those photos, that highlight in whatever online magazine, you will never, your metabolism will never be the same again. Your metabolism will forever be changed. It will always be slower. Okay, I know I said it will always, and that's so ultimate and absolute. That's not, you know, I, I'm not God. I don't know that for sure, of course. But it's happened to me, and it's happened to almost every competitor, or every, I think every competitor that I know. So take from that what you will. Um, yeah, I mean, your body and your health, these are the goods that are being sold and traded, and you have the final say, no one else. Your body is queen. Your body speaks listen to it. If you feel a physical sensation, um, ask questions about where that's coming from. Let me see. Do I have anything else with body? I think I just kind of want to close out with like, stop kneeling at the altar of other fit people's bodies and start kneeling at the altar of your own body. There's nothing more beautiful than that. There's nothing more rewarding. That might be triggering for some people. That's, that's triggering for my boyfriend. He actually, um, the thought of like worshiping your body or parts of it or the thought of like that level of like reverence. Is there something there that like if you have, you know, a certain type of religious upbringing that can feel really weird. So I apologize if, if, if I triggered you in the wrong way. Again, what I said in the beginning when I set the container, if something doesn't land for you, then toss it out. But for me, that really landed. I heard someone saying that about something else in business. And I, I felt what a beautiful perspective to do that with your body. Kneel at the altar of your own body and stop kneeling at the altar of all these other fitzbos or these judges who are going to make a determination. Okay, let's talk about respecting the mind. This one will be a little bit shorter. So our minds keep us safe, right? How do they do that? They live in the past and they live in the future. They're pulling from old information in the past of what has happened before to try to make a determination of what will happen in the future. So past is regret, future is anxiety, if you're looking at these things in a negative way. So the mind gets a bad rap for this, but where this could potentially be beneficial um, is when you get to respect your own mind above other people's opinions. So we're always like, be present, get out of your head. If you're in your head, you're dead. Yes. But sometimes, like, it is really helpful. Your brain is trying to keep you safe and alive, and sometimes that information is relevant. It's not always about the body. So I know I sound contradictory, but again, it's about balancing all of these pieces. The mind wants to understand, the body wants to experience, and the soul wants to just stay steady on the course of what it's here to, to do. 
So the mind, the mind will want to understand and make logic out of everything. Sometimes the body just wants to experience it. It just wants to feel. The body is like, this doesn't make any sense. There's no rhyme or reason as to why I want to feel this sensation, but I just do. And that can be in sadness, crying something out. The body just wants to do it. And then you feel better. That can be in happiness. That can be in, you know, tactile ways. But when safety is concern, is the, the concerning factor, um, sometimes the mind really does play a crucial role. So let's talk about that a little bit further. When, and, and so this comes when there are other people's opinions happening. So again, a co- it's, this goes back to the consensual coach versus the non-consensual coach. If a coach is shoving something at you and saying, you get to do this, like this is, you need to do this and there's no other possible way and they're pushing, 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 some type of game plan onto you and it doesn't feel right. It just is like, ooh, maybe the coach's game plan is right, but in smaller sips because you're just not ready for the full thing yet. So maybe you you scale back and you try in more incremental pieces because you have like a specific journey that you're on and it has to be done in like the appropriate way for you and your being. Or... Maybe it's not small sips at all. Maybe the coach is really actually giving you something that is not your truth. It's not resonant. And if they're not following up and saying, how does that feel to you? If you're like, oh, that feels scary. And like my brain is going nuts right now, but my soul is, is quietly saying yes, yes, yes. And we'll talk about the soul more the spirit in a minute. But okay, that's one thing. But if everything inside of you, if your brain is going 911, no, 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 this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. The body's unsure, it doesn't know what it's going to feel next, and the soul is like either completely tapped out and quiet, or it's like, "Eh, I might be going with the mind on this one. There's something there. That, That may not be the right game plan for you. That may not even be the right coach for you. Okay? So respect your mind in that, like, you aren't stupid. You aren't, like, nobody knows better than you when it comes to your fitness, your body. They know a lot. I know a lot. Trust me. I know, I know not everything, not even close, but I know so much about health and fitness and weight loss and the body and anatomy and kinesiology and, you know, all of those things. I know nutrition, science. Ooh, I'm such a nerd for all of that stuff, but it doesn't matter if it's not part of your path. It doesn't matter if it's not, if it's not like for your body, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? So I, I can, I know so much about how to build a bigger booty so much that I'm making a workshop out of it that, uh, by, by the way, DM me if you want to be a part of that workshop, 37 bucks, 90 minutes, we're getting it. Shameless plug. There we go. I know so much about that, but if that's not your goal, it doesn't matter. That's not part of your path. And I know it sounds shallow and stupid, but we got to have some of the fun stuff, not stupid, but like silly. We got to have some of the fun stuff in there as well as, as well as all this deep work, right? So if I'm like, you need to build a bigger butt, that's my opinion. And I'm, I'm your coach. And you're like, but I don't want to. I like my butt the way it is. And my head is telling me that my butt looks fine. And like, I'd really rather build some abs. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's all, it should be about your butt. That's, that's what we should put all of our energy and time on not your abs. And you're like, no, I really, my brain is really telling me that I really just want to build my abs. It's an, it's like a really like kind of like really clear, obvious example, but do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's about what you want, what your mind said, okay, this is why I'm getting coaching. Not about what the coach wants you to have with your own body. Make sense? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so this goes back to those two levels of fitness that I was talking about. First level of fitness, getting pushed, leaning into your comfort, the edges of your comfort zone, being um, closer to your fullest potential. Second level of fitness has already done all of that and now needs to be reminded to come back home in order to achieve balance and have sustainability long term because they've already reached the edges edges of their comfort zone maybe multiple times. They've seen that potential, but they're not able to sustain that potential because there's been no balance. And all, you know, these goes, these come down to self-worth. They're just expressed in different ways. But if the person who, the first level of ascension, if they haven't um, ever seen 
that body that they want to achieve if they've never seen their potential you know come to fruition then they may need a little bit more pushing um, and that may feel better for them and that feels kind of like yes this is the next step on my path is to have a coach tell me what to do and I trust them and there's not too much noisiness and fear going there's some but not a, a ton versus the second wave of person who is gonna probably gravitate to and get healthier long-term results from a coach that's holding more space and reminding them to tap in here and does this feel good or does this feel like it's too much. Here's an example of what I was talking about. So there's a woman who bought L3 Lite that I spoke with and she's amazing. She's a beautiful soul and she shared with me a little bit about her story along her fitness journey. The last coach that she had um, was, it sounded like she was a little less seasoned, maybe been a, more of a beginner fitness coach. And she basically had goals for herself about bulking, cutting, bulking, cutting. And the woman who bought L3 Light, who was originally coaching with her last year, she didn't want to bulk. She only wanted to just lose weight. And she didn't want to do it in this like seesaw way. She wanted to just kind of maybe take down her exercise a little bit and take down the amount of food, increase the quality of her food to match that level of exercise and movement so that she could continuously lose weight with the level of calories she was burning per day. Also, she needed, you know, she got to dial in some of her other self-care tactics to support her overall goal. This coach of hers last year um, ignored all of that ignored her goal and basically slapped her own, the coach's own goal on this woman and said, no, we're gonna keep your calories high. We're gonna keep you eating a ton of protein even though you're not really exercising that much. So what happened? Of course, this woman gained weight. She wasn't happy with her results. She didn't even get mad at this woman. This was a good friend of hers, I think. But it was like, it was so beautiful the amount of trust this woman had for this coach. But at the same time, that hurts my heart because what I instantly think of is an analogy that I'll, I'll use about, again, I'm talking about hairdressers again, but okay, let's say there's a hairdresser who is a curly haired redhead and everyone that comes into her salon and sits in her chair, she makes them, she turns their hair curly, she gives them all a perm, you know, if they have Caucasian hair that's originally like straight, she gives them that type of like curly perm and she dyes their hair red. And she's like, okay, great, you're on your way. That's what works for the hairstylist. The hairstylist has a curly red haired look and that looks awesome for her. But she has to be the level of expert that is required to help a bigger majority of the population than just curly haired redheads. She gets to have a level of master, mastery and a level of understanding that her clients maybe want something different. One client may want to have black hair. One client may want to have long hair. One client may want bangs. Another client may want to have layers. One may want to have a buzz cut. And she gets to be well-versed as a hairstylist who is certified and licensed to be able to um, support a variety of results and goals for her clientele. It's the same thing with a fitness coach. A fitness coach doesn't just, she shouldn't just be, I mean, I don't want to say should or shouldn't, but in my opinion, if you are a masterful fitness coach, you are able to help a variety of people with a variety of metabolisms and body shapes get to a variety of different goals. It's not about me plastering the way I do things for my body on every single person that I am in touch with, that I work with. Heck no, that is so silly. Minimum effective dose. What works for me will work for another woman, but then it may not be sustainable because it's not what she truly enjoys. It doesn't feel like her truth. So have self-respect and you can do that by walking into a consult if you're trying to choose a coach and Try to figure, see, like, see if they're able to get a range of results or see if they get a result with the type of shape and metabolism speed that you have, um, you know, type of climate that you live in, the type of taste buds you have, the type of busy schedule you have, priorities, goals, all that stuff. 
make sure that they either are able to be really, really versatile with a variety of clientele or that they're able to get your exact specific result. And they're not just, they're not just like able to just do one thing that they did because the moment that they decide that they want to do something else with their bodies now for themselves, not because they're your coach, but because that's what they want for their next move and their look, you're like, you're up the creek without a paddle because then you're like succumbing to whatever they want next. Just like my example of the lady who eventually bought L3 Light because her coach decided, okay, I kind of want to bulk now. So now I'm going to make all my female clients that want to lose weight bulk. So just, yeah, have discernment. That is a big cornerstone for self-respect, especially when it comes to the mind. Okay. Here's another way that contradicts a bit in the first way of respecting the body. Respecting the mind means actually having um, adherence to futuristic thinking. So again, we give the mind a bad rap. Oh, it's always living the future of the past. Well, here's the thing. Remember we said the body just gets to experience or wants to just experience things. So future thinking is, all right, I know if I sit on the couch right now and just eat chips and binge out on my favorite TV show that I will feel really good right now, but tomorrow I will regret it because I'll be a day behind in my goals, you know? So instead I should probably get up, put on my workout clothes and go do my workout, do a workout that feels good, but do something that increases my trust in myself to get the job done. That's futuristic thinking. That is very mind heavy. That is not body heavy. The body's on the couch with the potato chips like, oh, this feels so good. I just want to keep doing this. I just want to experience this, right? But the mind is like, hey, yes, this does feel good, but tomorrow we're not going to feel good. And long term, we're not going to feel good because we're going to gain weight eating potato chips and lying on the couch all day. We're going to feel really good if we get this workout in now. We may not feel good for like 10 minutes because we're like, I don't want to get off the couch. But if we stay in that future thinking with the mind for a little bit and then balance it back out, we'll feel good afterwards or during the workout too. So that's another way we can have self-respect for our mind um, to get those results that we're after long term. Okay, um, here's an example of past thinking and then we'll move to the spirit. Past thinking, um, how that can be you know, respectful uh, is, so I've had two back surgeries. Therefore, there are certain things in the gym that I know I probably shouldn't be doing um, anymore. When I look at other people sometimes at the gym doing those things, doing those exercises, like let's say like a really heavy deadlift, I'll see someone doing a really heavy barbell deadlift and I'm like, Whew. because what? My body remembers how that felt. I feel the physical sensations. It feels so good to deadlift. That's why I did so much of it in the past and hurt myself. <laughs> um, but I remember that in 2016, so uh, like almost five years ago now, I had to get two back surgeries because um, I was injured. And I know that if I do deadlifts today and I do that much weight and I do it in that way, like barbell, both legs on the ground instead of the other ways, I do deadlifts in different ways now that are really, really effective for, for butt growing goals and hamstrings and all that stuff. Um, if I do the way, if I do deadlifts that old school way, um, I know that uh, I'll, I'll risk really, really, really serious consequences. Like I won't, you know, I could lose my ability to walk. I will lose the rest of that brake pad, that the 30% of the vertebrae that's left in my back um, between, or excuse me, not vertebrae, disc. The disc between the vertebrae, that brake pad, I'll risk losing the remaining quarter to 30% of it that's there. And then I'll have to fuse those discs. And then I'll never be able to do more things again that I already can't do right now. That's past thinking. So I'll see it, I'll feel it, I'll get a little envious at the gym, I'm like, oh man, they can do that. I remember when that felt so good. I really wanna do that, my body wants to experience that. But because of my past thinking, I know, okay, it's not, it's not worth it. And that's respectful of myself, of my brain that's trying to protect me. Okay, let's move to the spirit. 
Number three, this is the quietest voice of the three for sure. Uh, it's also the most surprising in terms of messages received. In order to hear your spirit, you must turn down the voice. The voice in the mind is the loudest. The voice of the body, the, the physical messages are usually the second loudest unless you're injured and there's a tremendous amount of pain. And then that gets a lot louder than your brain can even think. For any of you that have been in tremendous pain before, you understand this. Um, the, the quietest voice is the spirit. And you can call this whatever you want, interchangeable, your heart, your soul, your essence, higher self, but like this, this awareness, this observer behind the observer, right? Like if you say something in your head, not out loud, like say, um, KRS-One does an awesome video of this on YouTube. Say rock star in your head, ready? One, two, three. So you didn't say rock star out loud. I didn't say it out loud, but you heard it. What is that? That's the fifth dimension. That's the awareness behind the awareness. That's the observing behind the observer. Or no, it's the observer behind the observing. There you go, switch those two. That's your spirit. Cool, so now we understand what that is. So let's talk about how we can respect, have self-respect for your spirit part of you uh, on your fitness and weight loss journey. So we turn down the knob, we make sure the body is settled and feels safe and is not in pain, and then we can like tap in. Examples of this are like, you'll hear a calling, like something will come to you in a dream and you'll take blind action on it and it changes the course of your life, right? You've heard that before, like where all of a sudden, you'll be, people will talk about how like, I don't know, all of a sudden it just came to me and it was like, this is what I need to do. And it was like something else. It wasn't your logical brain. It wasn't your, it was something else it was like, I got to do this. And they did it on a total whim and it ended up being it just, it literally changed the outcome of their future. That's an example of your spirit calling. Cool. Um, so the spirit just wants to stay on its path, doing what it's supposed to do in this life. And I already said that. Um, here's another example that's helpful maybe for you guys. Uh, the pandemic. Maybe you felt, I don't know, maybe not everyone felt this, but I think a lot of us felt a, a feeling of like slowing down. When that happened, it was as if the world was kind of, the planet was like calling everyone to just slow down, take a moment and reassess how we're doing everything and if there are maybe better ways to do things. That was kind of a spirit calling, right? It didn't feel physical. Maybe it did. Maybe you felt more exhausted, right? Maybe ugh, more like drained. I know I felt that in moments for sure. But before that physical sensation happened, I believe there was a spiritual type of calling there. And I don't mean spiritual in a religious way. I just mean like your essence was like, oh, maybe we're meant to do this. Cool. Um, another example of respecting your spirit in fitness. So you get up in the morning and you have your structured day made by the structured mind. And it says, we are going to do this, this, this. We're going to get up. We're going to drink our water. We're going to drink our coffee. We're going to meditate. Then we're going to work out at the gym. And then we're going to take a shower, drop the kids off at school, whatever, blah, 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 make our lunch, go to work, so on and so forth. This is my schedule for the day. When you get to the part where it says, do the workout, <laughs> and all of a sudden, something in you is like, I don't want to go to the gym environment today. Nothing wrong with your gym typically, but today it doesn't feel right. Why is that? I'd rather, instead of doing that workout, I'd rather go take a jog in nature. I'd rather go hike. I'd rather go for a walk in like the nature reserve or like in the woods near my house or by the lake. That's what I'm feeling like I, I should be doing with that hour of my day instead of going to do, you know, chest and shoulders today. And if we ignore it, Sometimes nothing happens. Something, some, sometimes something happens, but we never link the two as being um, related to the other or being a cause and effect of the other. But sometimes we follow that calling. We hear that like quieter voice, and then we're like, "All right, this doesn't make sense." But and I, I planned it this way. But all right, I'll go for a hike instead of go to the gym today. Fine, whatever. You go for a hike and then something amazing happens. You run into an old friend that you've been dying to like catch up with. You have an idea on your walk that's nature related, that leads to a breakthrough at work that you never would have thought of in the gym. I don't know, I'm trying to think of ideas, but something happens 
that never would have happened if you had been at the gym. And it was because that like little voice was calling you and saying, hmm, do this today. Maybe that workout was going to cause more acidity in the body. Maybe you just worked out and there's still breakdown happening in your system to rebuild more muscle tissue, but you just needed that extra day to just get the, the lactic acid through your system. <sighs> so I guess the conclusion from that is have more fluidity in your plans. Again, remember those two levels of fitness. The first level be benefits from more rigidity, from more structure because they haven't structured themselves. They haven't said, I am going to get this done, and then they stuck to it. They maybe have said that in the past, they've fallen off, they've fallen off, because they're just, they don't know what they don't, they don't know what it feels like to reach their potential. So often what we don't know feels, it's, we fear what we don't know. We're like that can't, the unknown is uncertain and therefore it's dangerous. That's like what our brain will tell us sometimes. So, more structure is great for that first level of ascension in fitness. The second level of ascension in fitness gets to have more fluidity. They are great at creating structure and following through, but then they miss those little moments in life where really crazy quantum breakthroughs can be achieved in their fitness. And a quantum breakthrough just means like 5Xing something, like getting a max result with very little effort. So oftentimes this second level of ascension, they're, they're efforting so much and they get to like look into the 80-20 rule and think about what can I, what are the like big moving things I can do to make everything else either irrelevant or much, much easier. So that second level, having more fluidity in your plans, um, this second level will often feel really stiff in their own bodies and it's literally because there's like extra pressure because the little littlest slip up in their gym agenda, gym regimen is they think it's going to cause them to fall off. When in reality, like if they just like loosened up and went for that nature walk, then they would have, they'd have like more um, looseness, more flexibility, both in their schedule and in their body. And then that would cause them to feel better. And once they feel better, that causes them, causes them to show up differently in the world. And that actually increases strength and power in the muscles. Okay, yeah, so nature is a big thing. We get to have nature woven into our fitness plans. Even you guys who live in the tundra, even you guys who, who uh, live in very cold weather, you get to figure out a way to have a little bit of nature in your structure. Okay, um, another big example of when you would listen to your spirit and respect it is when you're picking out a gym. So this is such a fun time for, you know, a meathead like myself, not really, but you know, like a, a gym, a gym rat like myself is when, um, and I don't, yeah, it's cool. I don't mind calling myself that. It's fine. Um, <laughs> when a recovering bro sciencer, <laughs> when we are picking out a new gym, it can be really exciting, but listening to your spirit can help you figure out if that atmosphere that that particular gym offers if it's the right atmosphere for you to flourish in. So think about it, especially if you live in a cold climate, you are spending more of your time in a gym. If you spend a lot of time in one place, it gets to be high quality because your life gets to be high quality. It's just like your bed. You spend one third of your life sleeping. So your mattress gets to be high quality, whatever that means for you, if it's softer, if it's firmer, whatever your needs are, you get to have your needs met. So if day after day you're going somewhere that you don't like, and it might not be tangible, again, it's spirit. So you might not understand why it feels off. You're like, the vibe just doesn't feel good in here, and I have no idea why. And it might not even be your business to figure out why. Maybe there's something going on with the owner or the manager of the gym, and you just don't know what it is, and you don't even have to know. All you need to do is tune into that little voice and understand that something here is not resonant with you. Something here is out of alignment and it could be everyone else's truth that are working out in this gym, but it's not yours. So you get to go find another place. Cool. Hopefully in your area, you do have options. If you don't DM me, we'll figure out what we can do as far as options like for a home gym for you or something. <sighs> yeah. So I often say like, we all have these core wounds, right? That we're trying to heal and there are big 
things in our li life, like sl sl slices of the pie, that are the innocent bystanders by which we take these wounds and just like make them even and gash our wounds over and over again on them. And so these innocent bystanders can be fitness in our body, food, money management, our career, our friendships, our romantic relationships. These are the innocent bystanders. So like your body is not the problem. Fitness isn't the problem. The fitness industry isn't the problem. It's you have a wound, you have a core, you have something in your core that gets to be healed and you've, you've taken this modality or this cornerstone of your life, this slice of the pie, as your path to healing that wound. So if it's, you know, if you don't have a money wound, money seminars and ways to make more money and cryptocurrency and all these different things will seem like dissonant to you. It'll seem neutral. Like, okay, well, that's no big deal because it's not something that you're like excited about healing within you. But if, it, if you do have a money wound, you'll like find yourself constantly in debt. You'll get out of debt, get back into debt again. You'll always, there'll always be something popping up in your path that's keeping you from, you know, um, creating wealth, creating financial stability, right? Because that's, that's the innocent bystander by which you're trying to heal that wound. So with fitness, if you feel like, ooh, I may, that may be it for me. I may be trying to heal this wound with fitness. Examples of this could be you're losing and gaining the same 15 pounds over and over and over and over. Now you're in your 30s or 40s and you're like, I've been doing this for so long. What? Like, There's something deeper going on here. Yes, there is. There's something deeper going on. It's spiritual. It's, it's your spirit. It's your heart. It's your essence. It's your path. Something is going on that's causing you to like look at it and, and it's keep, it keeps popping up in your path until you heal it. That is the self-respect of this other side of things, this other awareness behind the awareness. It's deeper than the physical sensations. It's deeper than the logical mind. But again, they all get to be in balance. Um, from a coach's perspective, how I can respect someone who I'm working with is trying to lose weight. I respect you by showing up. For, and so someone coming onto the, the um, live right now, I hope that they're like, I hope they heard some of this other talk because it'll make no sense out of context. But I respect my client or my member of L3 Method, what have you. I respect someone who's just listening to this because you're receiving a transmission still. You're not paying me for this, but there's still some consensual coaching that may be going on, right? Again, you're taking what you want, leaving what you don't. I respect you by showing up and doing what I said I was going to do and then walking away energetically clean, meaning I don't need you to get results in order to validate me as a coach. That's how I respect you. Does that make sense? So having self-respect when you are being coached means taking in the person's, taking in the coach's information, asking as many questions as you need to ask, getting as much clarity as possible, but then always remaining in alignment. And if something doesn't feel right, speak up, respect yourself enough to communicate to your coach, even if it feels scary because maybe you're intimidated, you, you really admire your coach, speak up and let them know, hey, this doesn't feel right. I don't mean this to be a slight at your coaching. I just, I don't know what's going on here, but this doesn't feel good. And then a masterful coach who isn't codependent on your success, who isn't needing you to affirm him or her, and everything you say is so good and you, you're just amazing, you're the best coach. Someone who shows up energetically clean and with the intention to respect you will not come into the conversation or into the coaching coachy relationship needing you to validate them. They'll come in from a place of service because they've already taken care of theirs. I've already taken care of my own self-respect. I've already like, I've already aligned myself with my own work, my own healing. I've got that dialed in. So when I show up for you, I am showing up for you. I'm present for you. I am listening more actively than maybe anyone else has ever listened to you in your entire life. And I am validating your feelings and emotions, whether they are coming from your mind, your body, or your spirit, 
I am validating those with my full body, my full, my fullness. Maybe again, more so than anyone else has ever validated the way you feel before, because that is how healing takes place. So that's embodied service, which is beautiful. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm basically in my notes here saying what I just said a little bit differently, so I don't really need to repeat any of this. Yeah, so another uh, spirit respecting way of doing fitness is, is also, you know, coach wise or when you're signing up, when you're purchasing a supplement, you're purchasing a protein powder, you're purchasing some new snazzy something at Whole Foods, you're purchasing some apparel, try this exercise. This is cool. Try purchasing that product or service from your heart. And if there's dudes watching, I'm sure you're like, ugh. But seriously, try it. Yes, we have our mind present and we are respecting the minds need to keep us safe and we're listening. Then we tune down. Now we're respecting our physical sensations. We physically feel drawn to this. Okay, check. Lastly, does it feel like this company is in the same heart alignment as you? Do you feel that they are operating from a heart-centered space, meaning that they really, really want to see you win? They really want to see you be healthy and succeed. Yes, companies have to have profits. They have to. They have to. That's how they survive. That's how you keep a company healthy. But profits at the sake of what? Is there a sacrifice happening? Is there a self-extraction on the part of the customer occurring for those profits to keep coming in? Or is there alignment? Here's profit. Here's my money. And you're giving me something that I know you've made with the intentions that fit with uh, my alignment and my values. You can do this with, um, with your mind, checking out credentials, certifications, before and afters, testimonials, social proof, ingredients, manufacturing, um, standards, eco-friendly, all that packaging. Um, and then if it's a person that you're thinking about hiring, this is a question that I'll use often actually when I'm thinking about taking on a new client. I'll say to myself, would I like have a glass of wine with this person? Or if you know, lately wine has been giving me some, lately wine hasn't been agreeing with my system. So now the question I'm actually more accurately currently asking, would I have like, if it's a woman, would I have a manicure pedicure? Like would I get mani pedis with this person? Would I just spend some downtime? Would I take a walk in the park and just like, shoot the breeze with this, with this human, with this beautiful soul. And if the answer is a, an aligned yes, yeah, let's go. Let's do this because then I'm going to be in your corner. Like I'm going to be so excited to back you on your fitness weight loss mission. Cause I see you, I see you, I see your heart. I see your soul. And I want nothing more than for that soul to be its highest expression and win. And like, then I'm like, I'm on your team. Like you got me, I'm all in. So I hope that makes sense. Let's tie all three together. <sighs> Present thinking, in this moment, does this feel truly aligned to me? This is a self-respect question. What will you notice um, when the mind, heart, and body sync up together? What do you notice when one does not overpower the other, when they're all working in synchronicity? Um, yeah, I had a demonstration uh, I was going to do with like intuition with, uh, with eating, but you know what? We're going to end here. I'll do that maybe in a future masterclass, so stay tuned. But I want to, uh, I, <laughs> I said I was going to keep this short and I didn't. <laughs> uh, so in closing, I hope this has helped respect your body and in turn, she will feel that. Or if you identify as a male, he will feel that. Um, you will slowly but surely improve that relationship to the point where she truly feels like you have her back and you're not going to put her in danger anymore. And then she will trust you enough to return the favor, give you what you des desire as far as your external physical appearance goes, as well as your energy levels. 
and then you'll be rocking and rolling. You'll have you'll have the look that you want, and you will also feel really aligned instead of like your nervous system being out of whack because you're like, I I lost the weight. I think I look good, but my soul hasn't caught up to this. I don't feel really aligned because I feel like I don't deserve this yet, or I feel like I got this way, but I did it only eating 500 calories a day. So this is really really temporary. Ah, but I'm so scared to gain the weight back. That's not the result we want. We want to feel mind, body, soul. Yes. Boom. Walk in the room. This is me. This is how I look. This is my body and it's here to stay. And my health is here to stay because I operate from a place of sovereignty. Cool. I love you. Have a wonderful day. And thank you for listening to this. And if it's more your style to, I'll put this in the notes too, but if it's more your style to listen to a YouTube video, I'll be uploading that as well. If you got like a long car ride or whatever workout or something, you want to listen to this via YouTube. It's cool. All right. Bye guys.